So the first pretty useful command, and pretty much every Technifo file needs to have this, and usually multiples of these, is a menu. So a menu is um, a series of nodes that have been laid out, and when it renders to info or HTML, those will be links or hyperlinks to those nodes, and in um, in tech, they'll just be references, right, with parentheses. So you write a menu like this, you put a star, and the name of the node. So you can write first chapter. So now that we've written first chapter colon colon, we're saying there's a node that's named first chapter, and we want you to link it here, OK? So now we'll have to create this node, or else info will complain, right? Everything in your menu has to be a node. So um, let's make this node. So if you remember, uh, at node, and then we can write first chapter. And remember the spacing, it's totally chill to have a space in your node name. All right. So that's a node for you know tech info and HTML. But now we also want to create a chapter for when we export to PDF. So you got to kind of think of both of these things as you're going. So you go chapter, sorry, chapter, first chapter. Okay, and um, you know you could write this is the first chapter on G, and uh, here's another interesting one. So you can create lists uh, that you know automatically I, uh, number themselves. So that's an at enumerate. Uh, those familiar with LaTeX might be uh, you know familiar with that keyword to start a list. So we just write at enumerate, and we write at item for every item. This is an item, and item, you know, eggs. As if this was a grocery list that started with this is an item as the first item. So that's something uh, that you could totally do. All right, so here we have, um, you know, exported to the tech file. If you're watching a tutorial, here's the first chapter. We go in, boom, here's the first chapter. OMG, this is an item and eggs, right? Now, if you make the HTML, um, you'll notice that in the folder that it makes when you make the HTML, there's actually a new HTML file for the chapter. So every single node gets a new HTML file. So your URL, like slash first chapter, so it's easier to organize that way. All right, so we can open that again. So we say, awesome manual, hello there, you're watching a tutorial, blah, blah. We can create, go to click, first chapter, here's the first chapter. We've got a top node, we've got the next node. I mean, these are all pointing to the same place right now because we have so few chapters, but uh, you can see as these get more nested and more intricate, you can get a really easy navigation through uh, tech info, especially in Emacs. I'm not a huge, huge fan of the HTML one. So here we go with the tech to PDF. And real quick, um, you can use make info with the dash PDF option to make it. But I think tech to PDF works just a bit better for me. The other one was being a bit buggy with the PDF output. So um, your mileage may vary. So we can again, that's um, so the first chapter is coming above the title page. So that's an easy fix. Um, we simply had put all this stuff way after when we should have put it over here. Over there. So, um, and yeah, here we go. Here's the greatest manual ever, blah, blah, blah. Copyright info, first chapter, and um, this is an item. So, we got all those outputs. I'm not going to keep showing all three outputs because it takes a bit of time, but you got. So when you're writing a manual, there are some pretty common, you know, ideas that you have with your manual. So let's just go over those. But first, um, as you can see, it's already getting a bit crowded in this tech info file. Maybe not too crowded, but it could be better. Um, in like if you want to separate, let's say, every idea by its own tech info file, uh, you can totally do that. So basically, you can, let's say we want to write, um, I don't know, usage. I'm going to have a note called usage and how to use this 
bank program. Okay, and let's say we don't want to define that node in this file because I just don't want to keep scrolling. What we can do is uh, make an at include and then the name of the file uh, that will ha like have that node, right? So we can write usage.techie, okay? Then we can write, we can make that file and um, then we just add node usage at chapter usage, right? So we made the usage file and now uh, when the tech info goes to compile it, it'll come and grab this file in the include. It's just like a solid paste in, like a C macro or something. So a lot of times when you're writing a technical manual, uh, there's going to be it's going to be interspersed with code. So there is a command uh, to write code. You can say you can write code like this, and then you just write at code. And then what you want to be in the code font, which is usually a monospaced sort of font, or it's in parentheses, or there's just some indication that it's code. So uh, let's just write code in the code file. So uh, I'll show you guys how that looks. So that's pretty useful. There's also other things like you should open, there's file, like for file names, right? So now that's actually going to have a different kind of output, possibly based on the uh, settings on what should look like a file name, right? Another cool thing that you can do is the table command. So you write at table to create a table. And so every entry in the table is going to be a column row. So it's going to be a two column table, let's say. So we can write at item um, prog1 subsequent row item. So a program. This is some fake SDK that has two item, two programs in it, right? So you can do something like this. But uh, the thing with the table is it needs a command after uh, the table to say how to format the columns that are immediately after item. So here, if you want to just format them normally, like two columns of text, you could write as is, right? And that would just format them as is. But in this particular scenario, we're trying to pretend like these are two separate programs and these are descriptions of those programs to the right. We can actually write at code, which will format the columns as code. And so the way that looks like, and that's that it looks like this. So you've got the nice um, monospace font here and then a, a description to the right. So another thing you might have in writing a manual, a technical manual, is something like uh, describing command line option. Let's just create a new node. Right, so writing options. So there is a, a shortcut to do this in tech info, and that's the at def opt, so like define an option, right? So def opt, we can write dash v, let's say, and if you want to add uh, another one, another option to uh, like a, that does the same thing, you can write da dash opt x, which is uh, like x, like extra option. So this is a classic, you know, dash v gives you the version. You can also use the uh, yeah, GNU thing of version. So you can say print out version of program and exits, right? And then you just write and def op. So that one was called options. Options, and that's the name of the node. And then we'll just include it down here. And um, so I have it to auto recompile here. So um, that, that looks like this. That looks like this. So you write here are your options, V and version prints out the version this is a user option so if you like it formatted like that you know that's pretty cool another thing you might want to uh, have in your manual is examples so like you show them on this locally and then you want to write an example so you write at example then you can write your example so this is just like you're telling them to go do a command and then end it again 
Well, that looks like this right there, right? So you can hopefully see that. You should only run this locally, and it just kind of puts that on its own line in the uh, monospace font. All right, but let's say uh, you know you're reorganizing. You didn't actually want uh, just all of the table and the example to be right here. You can actually create a menu. Uh, to start nesting the subnodes. So this is where the real power of tech info comes in, right? So instead of that, so we can write a menu best practices. So we can write something like this. So now this node usage has a menu which has two subnodes, right? Then we can write these two sub nodes. So I'm gonna write node programs, and let's just give that a chapter also. And then here I want to write node best practices, and I'll just give that a chapter also. All right. So the problem with the uh, putting chapters at every time makes these huge white spaces in between um, these pretty related sections. So instead of chapter, let's just write section, which will make a subsection after the chapter. So changing these to section, and now I have it to auto recompile the PDF. Um, hopefully, yeah. So as we can see here, as we can see here. It became 2.1, then 2.2. Like it numbered them automatically, just like in you know regular LaTeX. So, and let's say you didn't want um, that indent there, then you can just write kind of like a normal LaTeX at no indent, and that should move that over just like that. So there is some other support. So there is a little bit of support for other languages. For example, and if you're Emacs homie, you know this, you can write at list in info tech, or tech info, sorry, and you know, write some list, um, list code, and uh, it'll automatically recognize. All right, so that's a lot of uh, the PDF, but let's sh just show you guys the other versions too, so we can write make info on that. And then just info that and look at we've got our beautiful uh, you know info file here we've got the menu we go we jump to the first chapter we could just programs included um, so if you just write s you can start searching for regular expressions so I can write call anything that um, has a CA in it. Uh, here it is in Emacs, and I think um, I just think it looks good in Emacs. You know, uh, you got the nice little things. You can hit N to look at them. We got the user options. Uh, you've got P to go previous programs. You know, it uh, has better highlighting in Emacs, so it's pretty sweet. And if you're trying to uh, open your own info file. And it's not in the main info dir. You can write control U, control H, I. So we'll just run this again. Uh, remember to go into the folder. Point o. You can go to usage, and usage has programs. We can go to next. We can go to previous. This is what it looks like. We can go up uh, and up again, and go to options. And um, you can see it bolded some of the stuff there. So anyways, I think this is a cool program, and the cool thing is a lot of the GNU programs use uh, this, and the, the main one is, um, like honestly, I think the main benefit of TechInfo is that the, the manuals just look uh, very nice. So, you know, this is all generated automatically. Obviously, uh, manuals are a little bit old school now, so... And here, if you go to the GNU manuals online, you can actually see a lot of the docs. Not all of them are written in tech info, but a lot of them are. And if you, for example, look at one that you think is cool, so for example, Guile, which is like the um, GNU scheme or whatever, kind of like it's kind of like scheme. And you can look at the 
the manual so you can tell it was made with tech info um, and you know you can just look through and see if there's something interesting that they do like for example how did they get you know this association list or how did they you know make these bullet points in the enumerator or whatever if it's pretty interesting you can just go to their uh, tech info source read it copy what they're doing and it's very straightforward to read that's kind of how I learned from these examples I was just reading other tech info sources because um, they're very readable so anyways uh, that's all I had to say tech info pretty cool format you can even interlace there's a lot more to say about it uh, but that's base that's the basics you can even interlace LaTeX math if you so choose to um, so yeah so that's tech info see ya